Big East basketball. Tonight's game features the Providence College Friars versus the Boston College Eagles. Big East basketball is brought to you from the County Forum on the campus of Boston College at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Tonight, it's the Boston College Eagles and Providence College Flyers in Big East basketball. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gil Santos, along with Dom Perno, as the 4-3 and three Flyers take on the 0-7 Boston College Eagles. These two clubs played earlier in the season in December, Providence winning that one handily, but Boston College has been playing better. And one of the people, Dom Perno, they're going to have to really concentrate on that plays well for Providence inside and outside is Marty Conlon. Marty Conlon, I love him because he's a versatile big guy. You could take you inside and destroy you, and he's an excellent foul shooter when he goes to the line. The other area he's tough at, he can go away and shoot the three-point shot as he, as he did against Syracuse and brought them back. He's a fine player. He's a blue-collar player, but he's got some nice versatility to his game. And you're talking about a blue-collar player, a guy who works very, very hard every game I've seen him play. That is Boston College forward Doug Abel. He's an overachiever. He's 6'5", battling the Giants, and night after night he does it. He can rebound for you. He rebounds with the best in the league, and he's just 6'5", but he's got great confidence in his game. He really plays every minute of every game, and Jimmy, I know Jimmy O'Brien loves him. He needs a few other guys, however, to fill some gaps too for him, but Doug is averaging 18 points a game. He's really sticking it now. He's rebounding, doing everything that you can ask him as a coach. The keys, one of the keys to this one tonight will be the play of the two backcourts. Of course, Providence has the outstanding backward combination to Murdoch and Screen. We're going to talk about them in a moment. Boston College has had problems in its backcourt, especially turning the ball over. Exactly, and I think what Jimmy is trying to do now is offset that and insert three guards. He liked the guard play to handle a little better. They had 25 turnovers the last BC game. So Jimmy said, hey, we're turning over too much, fellas. We're going to take a big guy out and insert a little guy, and our Diddy's going to start and play some Pruitt tonight. So we shall see what happens. What are the pluses and minuses of a three-guard offense, Don? Well, one of the pluses, obviously, is cut down on the turnovers. Better ball handlers in the game. And Arditi is a very good ball handler, along with Moran and Edwards. On the other hand, you're smaller. Matchups become a problem when you play man-to-man. -man, you could have a headache. But I think Jimmy will offset that and say, hey, we haven't been controlling the ball. We'll go with the three guards. When you look at the Providence College Friar backcourt, you're looking at perhaps the best backcourt combination in the Big East Conference in Murdoch and Screen. Well, I think what you love about these two guys, they play so well together, Gil. They do it in different areas, and consequently, they're very strong. So that's the way this one shapes up. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups. We'll be back after these local messages. Providence College overall 11 and 5, Boston College overall 6 and 11. Earlier in the season when they met, it was a Providence romp 85 to 66. Right now let's go to public address announcer Bill Gerson for the starting lineup. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Connie Forum for tonight's Big East basketball game between the Friars of Providence College and the Eagles of Boston College. Here are the starting lineups for Providence Number 11, six-foot senior, a guard from Brooklyn, New York, Carlton Screen. For the Eagles at guard, number 15, six-foot two-inch sophomore from Dorchester, Massachusetts, Brian Edwards. For the Friars at guard is number 14, six-foot two-inch junior from Bridgewater, New Jersey, Eric Murdoch. For the Eagles at guard, number 30, Six foot three inch junior from Queens, New York, Bobby Moran. For the Friars at forward is number 15, six foot five inch senior from Columbia, Maryland, Quinton Berta. For the Eagles, number 14, six foot three inch freshman from Brasilia, Israel, Lior Arditi. For Providence at forward number 30, six foot ten inch senior from Bronxville, New York, Marty Conlon. For the Eagles at forward number 35, six foot five inch junior from Baltimore, Maryland, Doug Abel. For the Friars at center number 25, six foot eleven inch senior from Staten Island, New York, Abdul Shamsin Dean. And for the Eagles at center, number 44, six foot 11 inch freshman from Newburgh, Indiana, David Hinton. 
The head coach of the Friars, Rick Barnes. And the head coach of the Boston College Eagles, Jim O'Brien. There are your starting lineups, and we're just about set to go. When we come back, we'll have the opening tap after these local messages. You may find this hard to believe, but last year, hundreds of people died due to carelessness. That is, uh, those comparisons are for all the games these two clubs have played. The Friars threw 16, the Eagles threw 17 games. This is the 70th meeting between the two. Providence holds an edge of 38 to 31. Boston College, 0-7 in the Big East, has lost its last seven games in a row. But they're due to break out sooner or later and hand somebody a surprising loss, Don Perno. They certainly are, and I think Jimmy O'Brien, what he's trying to do tonight is put the three guards in, offset some of the pressure from Providence College, and of course, you know Providence is not going to change their game plan. They've got to come right at you the whole night. The foul called on David Hinton. So it comes inbounds to Providence College. That's the first team foul. Murdoch and now Conlon operating out of a high post. Screen. Tried a blind pass inside. Nearly had it knocked away. The Friars come outside to Murdoch. No. Murdoch has his own rebound, but it's out of bounds off Eric Murdoch. And it will be a Boston College ball coming down. By inserting the three guards, go gives, gives BC a little more quickness on the floor also, and I'm sure that's another area Jimmy O'Brien is concerned about. And I'm sure it'll help against the Providence pressure defense to have another guy out there who can handle the ball. It certainly does, because they'll play you man-to-man -man all night, all the time. All right, this is Bobby Moran, and screen is on him. Moran now looking for a little help. They look a little bit confused right now. Edwards for three, comes up short, and Quinton Burton with a rebound immediately gets it to Carlton Screen. Brian's offense lagging a little bit this year. Of course, he's concentrating on handling the ball. Friars throw it away. Moran wins the battle for it. Nice spin and a nice pass off to Brian Edwards. Beautiful play and the quickness generated that time by Moran and Edwards. Pick up the steal, and Moran. Nice thinking and distributing the ball to Edwards. They kick it in low now to Shamsuddin. Burton trying to work against Arditi. The ball is stolen by Edwards. Excellent body control by Edwards. Misses the shot. There was the guy we talked about on top, Doug Abel. Edwards again, no. And Shamsuddin with a rebound. Well, Doug Abel, as we mentioned, overachiever, battling underneath with the trees. Able to 6-5, but he plays a lot bigger. He certainly does. He's, he's active. Conlon and now Burton for Providence. They work it low. The turnaround by Shamsuddin does not go. And Shamsuddin will go to the free throw line. The foul is on Doug Abel. Providence uh, has yet to score, and we've played two minutes plus here at the Conti Forum. And quickly a change. Murdoch is out for Providence College, and he is replaced by Chris Watts. Well, you'll see a lot of interaction with the guard play. Murdoch, of course, being talked to by Rick Barnes. You see Jimmy O'Brien here yelling out instructions. Both excellent bench coaches, Gil, and really active and into the game. An interesting matchup, Gil, be Shamsuddin is being guarded by Abel, and he gives up a lot of inches there. So it'll be interesting if Barnes goes to him a little bit more tonight. Shamsuddin drills the two free throws, and we're tied at 2-2. Edwards with Watts on him. Ryan Edwards breaking the pressure. Arditi, who had a good game against Georgetown last week. They kick it low to Abel. Tries to muscle it up, and he draws the foul from Shamsuddin. Shamsuddin playing behind Doug on the, underneath the basket there. Of course, he's got four or five inches on him. He's utilizing, utilizing that. But Abel is so strong to the basket. Good body control. Entry pass is fine here by Moran into Abel. And watch him use his body. Strong, good body balance, nice fake. Definitely a foul. He'll go to the line shooting, too. Doug Abel is a junior from Baltimore, Maryland. 6'5", 200-pounder. As you look at Rick Barnes, the Providence head coach. Abel is uh, their leading scorer, averaging 12 points a game, 7 rebounds. Also their leading shot blocker with 18. Providence not, uh, Boston College rather, not shooting well from the free throw line in the Big East. 
58 as a team, very poor. Ball is out of bounds. It will be a Providence ball coming down. Boston College leads 3-2, to two, 17 and a half minutes left in the first half. And Gil, you know, the foul shooting is so important. In particular, you got the new rule, the six-ball rule, which I think sometimes leads coaches to maybe not be afraid of fouling, and you have to go to the line and make them. Screen finds Watts with Moran on him tough. Watts, one of the better three-point shooters on this Providence club. Providence being forced to be patient on offense as Boston College is playing heavy pressure defense. They, they certainly are. The defensive intensity is excellent right now. There's a three. Chris Watts came into the game with 25 out of 58 from three-point range, and he drills his first attempt of the night. Friars take the lead. Screen with a steal and the reach-in foul by Edwards, but Screen is on the floor and may have injured himself. It's feet went right out from underneath him. He got wrapped pretty good that time. Coming up for the double up. Picks it off and then his foul once he makes the steal. We'll take another look at it here. Uh, here's Edwards with the ball and you see Watts got taken away the lane and now you see Carl Screen coming into the action right here and he definitely is going to make the steal but the right arm of Edwards goes across Carlton Screen's face however he looks like looks as if he's okay. He's going to sit down for a little bit and Eric Murdoch will come in to replace him. Screen, the senior point guard from Brooklyn, New York, just a fine all-around player. Between Screen and Murdoch, you know, people are always talking about uh, Matumbo and, and Morning with the block shots between them. Well, these two guys between them have, uh, <laughs> let's see, 46 and 55. That's uh, 101 steals oh, between yeah. the two of them. If you play with that ball, you're in trouble. And, of course, they love to do just what, the, just what occurred. They love that double up. They react really well when the player turns his back. Watts. Looking inside, now they're going to have to kick it back out. Here's Sean Sedin. Friars are leading 5-3. Conlon inside, the jump hook, no. Rough rebounding action. Ball is tied up, the possession arrow pointing for Boston College. That'll be Boston College ball. BC has to be pleased with the effort they're giving right now. And of course, here is the defensive pressure by Providence. And basically what it is, it's just man-to-man. -man. And they'll whack you and they'll hold you and stay active on you. You just got to have, have control and bring it up nice and easy. Moran and now Edwards. They look in low to David Hinton, the freshman. Moran from three. No. Hinton loses the rebound to Sean Sedin. And Murdoch comes out of there for Providence. 16 minutes to play first half. Conlon slipping right by Hinton. Doesn't get it. Does get the rebound and puts it back in. He can do a lot of things, Marty exactly. Conlon. Just as we talked about in the opening of the show, he's a guy who misses the shot, but he hangs around the hoop, gets a second effort, puts it back in, and he's relentless. He never lets up. 7-3 Providence lead. 15-45 in the first half. Doug Abel from outside. And it's 7-5. The Friars by two. Uh, Abel playing with an awful lot of confidence. We know he can sky, go to the basket, but now he's shooting 15-foot jumpers. Sean Sedin on the turnaround, banks it. No, Conlon and Hinton fighting for the rebound. We're going to get a foul on Marty Conlon. That will be the second team foul on Providence. Possession foul. Changes for Providence, and before we even get to the changes, there's a timeout taken here at the County Forum. 15-27 left in the first half, as you can see. Providence up by two in this Big East battle between down-the-road rivals. Boston wanted to go low, but Conlon, good inside position on it. Edwards. Two, Hinton, two. David Hinton, good-looking freshman from Indiana. Ties the game at seven. Ahead to Bragg. Marquis Bragg, I think you have to count the hoop. Yes, goaltending. Exactly, and that's what you have to do. You have to get back on defense and BC that time celebrating a little bit on the hit and hoop. Didn't get back down the floor, and they paid for it. Providence does this as well as anyone. When they, when you burn them quickly, be prepared for it to come right down your throat. And that time they advanced it, picked up the score. Edwards and now Moran. 9-7 to seven Providence, just under 15 minutes left in the first half. Gil Santos and Don Perno here at Boston College. Arditi, good three-point range shooter, takes it in and 
Nails it. It's a tough shot. Rick Barnes wanted to travel. What Providence does well as any team in the Big East is collapse and help out in their man-to-man -man day. Got a Providence College foul. It is on Marquise Bragg. That will be the third team foul on the Friars, a possession foul. In the middle, it is Edwards. 9-9 nine to nine is your score. 14-25 left first half. Still, Providence keeps you off balance because they change their defensive techniques. That time, they're looking for the trap. Other times, they just play a straight man. Moran and now Hinton. Hinton, nice move. Nice move. David Hinton, the freshman. Uh, the big guy, Jimmy O'Brien, really likes this big guy from Indiana, and here you see why. Some nice, strong moves, a nice pump fake, delivers it, and he feels pretty good about him. So we talked about Abel, overachieving. This guy has got to come on. Everyone's got to dig a little deeper, and it looks like they're starting out tonight doing that. Three-point play for David Hinton, and Boston College takes the lead at 12-9 over the Providence College Friars. Screen back in with Marvin Sadler. Now Brad Murdoch. A whistle and a blocking foul on Moran. That will be the fourth team foul in Boston College. Each team allowed six team fouls per half before it gets into a shooting situation. There's Boston College so far shooting it at 50%. BC struggling a little bit. And credit to the intensity of the defense by BC. Right now they're in a 2-3 zone. Green, now Bragg, and Murdoch. They try to alley-oop it. However, Brian Edwards anticipated the pass, got in the passing lane. Arditi gets fouled, and he'll go to the line. Boston College playing very animated with a lot of emotion so far here in the early going. And you know, Dom, we were saying earlier, the Boston College is 0-7 in the conference, but they've been playing better. They did not play well against Seton Hall, but they gave uh, they gave St. John's a heck of a game last Saturday night. They were right in at 50 seconds, 57 seconds left in the contest, and they were a contest. They were one point down. There's no doubt about it. I think he's getting good play from a, a number of people. I think what Jim is, Jimmy O'Brien's looking for is to all of them put it together one night, and they're going to do that. I'm sure they are. This league is a crazy league. Syracuse today blowing Georgetown oh. out. That's amazing, but they are. The, I think they've. Stepped up their intensity a notch tonight, BC. One of the uh, interesting statistics early on is that Providence has turned the ball over three times. Boston College only once, and that's been the Eagles' biggest problem, turning the ball over. It is a 14-9 lead for Boston College, and there and Providence commits a foul, and that'll be turning the ball over again. As Marquis Bragg commits the foul, it's a possession foul. Boston College right now is on a 7 to nothing run. Well, they haven't turned the ball over either, and that's a key. And here's the trap by Providence. They never, they're relentless. They never let up, but BC doing an excellent job and credit the three guards. Edwards, no. Bragg the rebound. Murdoch out of there for Providence, weaving through traffic. Screen, wide open for three. Drills it. Carlton screen. Green, when you think you got him down, they react. He and Murdoch, two of the toughest guards in the league. Can't forget them ever on the floor. Of course, the matchups are not bad here because Quentin Burns about 6'5", so it's, it's not bad right now with the people that are out there. So BC can play man and get away with it. Edwards. Moran from the corner, no. The rebound into the hands of Edwards. Tied up, possession, Providence. The possession arrow. Working for the Providence College Friars this time, as you see it. Yes, that used to be a jump ball, but now the referee can't get the ball up there. That's right. And, of course, Bobby Moran misses the foul shot, but Edwards dives in there for the ball. Goes to Providence, however. 14 to 12. Boston College by two with 12-20. And we have a foul. Let's see who this one's against. It's against Boston College against uh, Lior Arditi. That'll be the fifth team foul in Boston College. Providence has four. Hinton goes out, and he is replaced by 6'7", Reggie Pruitt.
screen for three. Overshoots his target, but Murdoch is there on the weak side. Second shots, BC, every attempt like that, they got to come up with the ball. Can't give Providence a second shot, or they really cause you problems. In low, Shamsuddin. Now Burton. Brad, tough move inside, blocked by Reggie Pruitt, who commits the foul. And that will put Quentin Burton at the free throw line. Providence's offense basically is geared to get the ball inside. However, screen, of course, uh, and Eric Murdoch can burn you off them. But basically, if you watch them, go, they're drilling it inside. Conlin and Shamsuddin do a nice job, however, when they're corralled under there, they, they dump it back up at a quick jump shot. Providence has a very well-balanced scoring uh, attack with a lot of players scoring in double figures. Bragg missing the front end of the two shots. Got Burton averaging 10, Conlon 15, Shamsuddin 8, Screen 13, Murdoch 15. One out of two for Bragg. And we're going to grab a timeout here. Right now, we've got 11.53 left in the first half. It's a one-point ball game. Boston College up by one. We'll be back after these local messages. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. Boston College has yet to turn the ball over in this game. Providence has turned it over five times. Highly unusual when you look at the way the two teams have played so far this season. Big rebound by Quinton Burton. Boston College up by a point. Screen started to go, then no. Conlon for three. Loose ball inside and a foul on Providence College, which will be number seven for the Friars, putting them over the limit and putting Boston College on the free throw line. With a long way to go here in the first half, Don Perno. Marquise Bragg with three fouls going over the back. Rick Barr's not happy with that. Have to get have to get position, and that foul is called so much. You know, guys just go over the back going for the ball. But uh, I think where uh, BC's doing a nice job thus far, they're boxing out well, their defense is aggressive. I think on the other hand, coming down the floor, they got to drill a few of those 14 or 15 foot jump shots when you're completely bare. Threw it on the missed free throw. And it's still a one-point lead for Boston College. The Eagles had a seven-point run, and they haven't scored now in the last two minutes. Burton to the hoop tough. No, rebound able. Boston College looking to break a drought of about two minutes without a point. What Providence tries to do to you, Gil, with their pressure is not so much steal the ball all the time, but get a quick shot. I think Jimmy would like his team to execute four, five, six passes, then look for the good one, rather than taking the first one to show because if you miss it, Providence comes right down your throat. Ball is knocked out of bounds by Eric Murdoch. It'll be Boston College ball with 19 seconds on the shot clock. Boston College up by a point. 10.45 left here in the first half. Edwards and now Pruitt. John Sedin comes out to meet him. Abel in the paint off the glass. Follow. Yes. Nice follow indeed by freshman Michael Reese. Michael Reese played extremely well against Seen Hall and that time excellent timing to pip, flip it back up. And he got a travel on John Sedin. And that is the sixth Providence turnover. Boston College has yet to turn it over. So the three-guard offense is certainly cutting down on the turnovers for Jim O'Brien. Certainly is. They're handling the ball well. Abel. Back comes Carlton Screen. Ten minutes to play in the first half. Eagles lead by three. Conlon is doubled up. Now Murdoch for three. Offensive rebound taken away by Burton. Uh, Providence with a fresh 45 seconds to restart their offense. 
Conlon finds Shamsuddin, who was not expecting the pass. Not at all, but that was right in the numbers then. <laughs> right on the hand. Should have had that one. That is the seventh Providence turnover of the first half. They have averaged only 16 per game in the Big East so far this season. Underneath, Edwards alone. Nice look by Arditi. Arditi finds the guard, guard to guard there underneath. Edwards finishes it off, and BC is on a roll right here. Got a five-point lead. Shamsuddin with a sweeping hook. Count the basket and a foul. Now, I think we had a foul off the ball. The foul was on Arditi, and I believe it was underneath. So that will probably put someone else in the free throw line. Let's look here at this nice pass by Arditi. Well, Jimmy went to the three guard offense, and here's Arditi looking like he's going to take the jump shot. No, sees Edwards down low, and he finishes it off. Fine play by BC. The foul was on Arditi, and that's the man he fouled, Marty Conlon. Oh, while Sean Sedin was wheeling in with that hook shot, Conlon was being fouled. <laughs> that was quite a hook by Sean Sedin. Of course, they can make this a four point play. One more shot for Marty Conlon. 18 to 16 ball game now. Boston College's lead is down to two. As you look at the 6'10 senior from New York, he gets them both. Michael Reese to inbound, does to Arditi. Pruitt in low to Hinton. Arditi again, 4 3. Providence throws it away. Quentin Burton looking to outlet it to Carlton Screen, threw it away. At the eighth turnover feed for BC, Gil, they're really careless with the basketball, and they don't usually do that. Of course, they got Screen and Murdoch, who are excellent ball handlers. Moran, Reese nearly losing control. Hinton low, the jump hook by the big man. The follow, no. Conlon can't hang on, Reese has it, baseline. Freshman Michael Reese from the D.C. Reese is all over the boards as B.C. is against second and third shots. You wouldn't think that wouldn't think this team has not won a game in the Big East the way they're playing right now. They're very hungry right now. A 20 to 17 lead for Boston College. 8:15 to go in the first half. Murdoch Arditi with a steal, and then he knocks it off of Murdoch. Fine play. Rick Barnes is going to be wondering what's going on. This team has turned the ball over nine times now in the first half. Here's this play by Arditi. Oh, the defensive effort by BC has done the job. And here, wisely, Arditi going out of bounds, hits the ball off of Murdoch, and BC has another attempt to go up by five or six if they make a three-pointer. Off the screen, Arditi, no. Way up for the rebound was Pruitt. He couldn't get it. Hinton followed, no. And we're going to get a foul on Providence College. Well, you see Quinn Byrne down low. Yep. The BC team, they're all going to the board. It's like a gang rebounding squad right now, and it's it's paying dividends because Poole was up there, Pinton was up there, Abel's on the boards, and consequently, their efforts inside have been very good. Perimeter game suspect right now, but they're really getting the second effort doing well. Boston College with eight points in the paint area. Providence with only two. And the Providence guards, Screen and Murdoch, have scored a total of three points between them. That was on a three-point shot by Screen. Isn't that interesting right now? And you know, Rick Barnes looking on the sideline. Of course, BC still having trouble at the line. Yeah, they've been struggling all year. That two for two. Freshman mistake. Leaving your feet on defense, hold your thing, don't, don't leave. Here's the trap, and here's where Providence is very effective. They keep coming at you. You can't let up. BC has to maintain concentration. Brian Edwards for Boston College, leading by a point with seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Reese, and now Moran. They kick it low to Hinton, slapped away by Sean Sedin. Screen, nice feed up court to Bent, doesn't get the shot to go. Shamsuddin the rebound, that hook again, and he was fouled. I was talking to some of the people from Providence earlier, uh, Joey Hassett, Ray Perry, and they said, when Providence College is shooting well, 
They can beat anybody. If they're not shooting well, then they're going to have their problems. Of course, that's a story with most teams, but Providence is going to be in most games anyway because of their defense. Exactly. The pressure D keeps them alive. They get the easy baskets very often, but when they are shooting, they are a very difficult team, and that's probably what they're saying. When they're not, you could have some headaches. And yeah. actually, when Sean Sedin plays well for them, they do a good job normally because he's a guy that's been a little bit inconsistent, but, you know, he, he can do it, as has been demonstrated tonight. He gets one out of two at the line. And we're going to get a timeout called here as the game is suddenly not about. With 7-12 to play, Boston College had a five-point lead. The Flyers have come back to tie them here at the Cotty Four. Back at the Cotty Forum on the campus of Boston College. We're even at 20-20. to These two longtime rivals, now for the last 10 years, rivals in the Big East. Other action in the Big East tonight. Down at uh, Connecticut, that's the opening of their new uh, gamble arena and Seton Hall up uh, by six over Villanova Boston College turns it over for only the second time in the first half well they've done a real a, a excellent job thus far that time just in trying to throw it away from the defensive player it goes out of bounds but all things being equal the BC guards have been very effective with the basketball there's the turnover story and that's one of the reasons this has been a tight game Burton off balance drew the foul from Michael Reese. And that was the difference between a freshman and a senior. <laughs> you read my mind. Exactly what I was thinking. He's gone up twice and Burton knows that, so he's giving him that little pump. And up he goes. Witten Burton at the free throw line, a 72 and a half percent foul shooter. We're talking about the well-balanced scoring. Off the bench, you got Bragg averaging six. Bent five and a half, Watts five and a half, good production. That's excellent, and that's, good teams need that. You oh, have yeah. to be deep in this league, too. You can't go with five guys, although little Louie up 13 to 12 right now uh, at Connecticut, he likes that seven people, and he sticks with it. I think you got a good example of the power of the Big East today when Pittsburgh, next to last team in the Big East Conference, knocks off one of the ranked teams in the country, Arizona. Exactly. That tells you how good they are, how, the, how good the conference is. Hinton from outside. Well, Providence attacked with that half-court pressure defense. They double up. They found the middle opening, which is going to be opening, and you got to make that shot, and Hinton delivered. We're even at 22. 6.20 to play in the first half. Whistle and a traveling violation. Friars turn it over for the 10th time in the first half. They've been averaging 16 turnovers a game in the Big East Conference, so they've nearly hit their average here in the first half. And it's really not come off of heavy defensive pressure by Boston College. It's Providence making mistakes. Exactly. Their execution isn't sharp as it is in most, most games, and consequently, BC has got to run at it. Boston College out of that three-guard offense right now as our DD's on the bench. So they've got to, they're going back to the normal two guard and three big people offense. You know what happens too sometimes? It's more, it's a mental game. Jimmy says, hey, we turned the ball over, we're gonna use three guards. Once you get into the pattern of feeling, you're not gonna turn it over. Very often you can come back with the two and they still feel good about what they're doing. With four on the shot clock, Edwards launches a three and a miss. 22 apiece, Providence coming back. Five and a half minutes left in the first half. Carlton screen. Screen and Murdoch, very quiet. Of course, Murdoch's out of there right now. Screen, banks at home. Must have heard you. <laughs> and I'll show that guy. <laughs> I'll tell that Perna what to do, I'm telling you. But Screen, you never could count him out. I think he just heard me, and he delivers it hard, and that's a good call because he had left his feet. He was in the air, has a chance to make it a three-point play. Murdoch back in. Rick Barnes makes a lot of substitutions, so let's set the five out there for Providence for you. Murdoch and Screen are the guards. Conlon up front with Shamsuddin and Burton. Screen makes it a three-point play and a three-point lead for Providence at 25 to 22. Boston College has their three-guard offense back in operation now. Abel on the wing, sneaks by Conlon. That was a nice move <laughs> by Doug Abel. When he took this, it was almost out of bounds, but he jumped back in play. Strong move. Screen. Beautiful. 
I remember the game at uh, Providence between Seton Hall and Providence that you and I did, Dom, earlier this season when uh, Providence was down most of the first half and then they, they ignited because of that man caught the screen. He just took control. He did, and he can do that in a game as Ken Murdoch. Edwards missing a three, and it'll be Providence ball coming down. Screen, of course, being the point guard, he's in your face all the time, and he can't dictate a game. Murdoch does it a little quieter. Screen kicking it off to Burton for three. No. Weak side rebound is out of bounds, and it will be Boston College ball coming down. There's a three-point shooting so far. Boston College is over its five attempts. Arditi back in is double teamed. In the middle, however, they get it to the big man, Burton. Doing a nice job of finding. That was a travel. Now, Edwards got in the lane and traveled with it. He did. Uh, him doing a nice job of flashing to the middle. That's what becomes available. They don't have anyone in there to start, but once the guard gets the ball, the trap takes place. They're getting rid of it quickly. Hinton finds the middle area open, gets it, and they can advance it up for a break. At that time, of course, Edwards traveled. 4-10 to go in the first half. Providence by three. It's been a tight first half. Screen looking inside for Conlon, who's in a war with Hinton. Now Sham Sadin trying to make his move, his double team. Screen, fastball through the middle of Murdoch, does not hit the shot, but he was fouled. <laughs> he's sly, he's slick. You forget him for a second, and he's going to burn you, and Murdoch, very tough. It looks like they call it a double oh, foul. Okay. We get a double foul on that? Yep. No, it's on Sham Sadin. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'd like to see that one again. Exactly, because Murdoch, of course, Opie coming to the ball, but Jim Burr right on the call, and Rick Barnes none too pleased with it. It puts Doug Abel at the free throw line. Abel is a 57% foul shooter. I'll tell you, he's as hard a working player as you're going to find in the Big East. On the rebound. Well, he certainly is coming out of Calvert Hall High in Baltimore. A lot of great players from that area, but he has to be one of the hardest workers. Screen. Controlling the ball. Now Murdoch. John Sedin back from Murdoch. Nice move. Doesn't get it. Ball loose. Murdoch has it. John Sedin. Conlon. He'll go to the line. Working like crazy off the offensive board that time. They certainly are. They're very active, and BC just a little, they're a little too quick for the rebound, and BC's timing just a little bit better. Here's a shot, a little long. You can see RD went up too soon. Conlon with the ball, all by 44. David Hinton, who has been very active inside also tonight. Marty Conlon to shoot two shots, averaging 15 points and seven rebounds a game. He's a 73% foul shooter. Also second on the team in block shots. Neither one of these clubs has the big intimidating blocker. Oh, well, of course, Providence's strength, as you mentioned, uh, Gil. They're solid all the way down. They don't have anyone averaging 20, 25 points a game, but they're all in the ball game. Their yeah. subs come in, they give you five or six a night, they rebound for you. And that's what Rick Barnes likes to have. 28-24, there's your score, Providence. 3.20 to go here in the first half. Arditi with Burton out on him. Pass slapped away. Good defense by Providence. Murdoch came up with it and then lost it. That's because Hinton got a hand on it down on the floor. Good hustle by the big guy that time. Well, we're going to get a timeout here at the Conti Forum with 3.11 to play in the first half. Providence College has a four-point lead. Both teams shooting it at 40% so far. Big East Conference Television Network, and it's part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East Basketball. 28-24, Providence College by four. Boston College has led several times in the first half of this one. The lead is seesawed back and forth. Turnover is interesting. Providence with 11, Boston College with only four. Both teams shooting it at 40% from the floor. Rebounding an 18-10 edge for Providence. Steals a 5-1 edge for Boston College. Interesting stat. Of course, BC has scored 16 points in the paint. They have to stick a few of those open jump shots that we've talked about because Providence does a great job with their interior defense. Arditi had it slapped right back in his face by Burton. 
Now Hinton and Arditi again out there with Edwards Moran and with Corey Beasley. Moran with it down to 12 on the shot clock. Hinton, good shooter from that range, rattles it home. That's what's going to open that man to man D of prominence. It's, it's stuck right back to the hoop. So the 12 14 footer is going to be available. And that time, the big guy ruled it. Comes in low to Shamsuddin and now screen. Now Providence rewinds its clock as screen tries to get the offense set up here. For three. No. Rebound hit. Kids having a heck of a game. Oh, he's out of the blocks well. He's rebounding. He's nice steal going. by screen. Comes back. He's got three on two. Beautiful job by Carlton Screen. You see him turn on the Jets after that steal? Unbelievable. He looked as if he stepped out of bounds, but you can't forget that guy. And of course, it ended up developing that they had three people down the floor. And great feed to Murdoch. He's an exciting player. Both guys do it. Now here's the steal by screen. Watch how how he accelerates after coming up with the ball. Now he's going to go right past these three Boston College players. Goodbye, guys. Tiptoes down the sideline. Just finds Murdoch. Ah, oh, just a great play and. We talked about him. He can excite you, and he can control the game, and he's taking control more and more. I think you heard me when I said he's kind of quiet tonight. <laughs> 30 to 26, Providence with a lead. A minute and 45 seconds left in the first half. Arditi with one and one. So he'll get another one. Lior Arditi is from Herzliya, Israel, and Jaffa Institute, 6'4", 200 pounders, 22 years old. He's on the Israeli national team. Gets one out of the two. Hitting the offensive board. It won't go, but he was fouled. I'll tell you what, that young man has played one heck of a first half. A 6'11 freshman from Newburgh, Indiana. Well, Jimmy O'Brien has said a number of times we talked to him. Here's the foul shot. An area BC has to strengthen themselves on, but the big guy, he's doing it tonight. Great second effort. Nice body control even after he's fouled. Going to the line, and you see Jimmy has to be happy with the play of David Hinton this evening and all the other BC players they're doing a nice job this evening a three-point lead for Providence College and David Hinton shooting one and one I'm sorry shooting two foul in the after shooting he's an 80 percent foul shooter normally and this is freshman year he's averaging nine points and four and a half rebounds a game good solid player has some fine moves to the basket but what you like about your big guys and Conley could do the same thing they go away from the hoop and stick it also Hinton gets one out of two, and we've got a two-point ball game with a minute and 43 to go in the first half. Bobby Moran extending the defense a little bit because screen kind of controlling the prior offense very effectively. Burton finds Murdoch. Sets up behind a Sadler screen, but we have a traveling call on Eric Murdoch. And Providence turns it over again. That, I believe, is their 11th first-half turnover. I'm sure Rick Barnes will have something to say in the locker room at halftime about that. We might hear him. <laughs> <laughs> Beasley for Boston College and now Arditi. A minute and 20 to go in the half. Two-point ball game. The Flyers are up. Beasley hitting. Just shooting right off. Well, as soon as he got the ball, he knew he was going to shoot. He's got the feel. He's got the confidence right now. He's playing hard on defense on Conlon. Take a look at him. He is active. Murdoch has it slapped away. Hinton comes up with a loose ball. Ahead to Arditi. We're tied. Oh. Arditi, nice feed to Reese. Beautiful defensive play. Blocked by Marvin Sadler. Well, the people here want a goaltending, and that's what it'll look like. But Murdoch drills it just when you think you got the Friars. Murdoch on screen. That was a big play by Sadler. Blocking the shot, and they get the two points out of it at the other end. It'll be put in play by... Michael Reese. And this is where you said it earlier, yo, Providence is effective. You think you got them, you forget them, and all of a sudden Murdoch or Screen make a big on the big block down here, and they're right back at you. Reese for Boston College. Two-point lead for Providence with 26 seconds remaining in the first half. There's your time, lower right-hand corner. Boston College can keep the ball for the rest of the half and get off the final shot if they want. Moran. Arditi thought he was going to go for three. Misses the two. Rebound to Sadler. Picking it back to screen. There's your time. Screen with time. Gets tripped 
and he will go to the foul line. Carlton Screen. Foul is on Arditi. Well, these are situations where coaches get great. I'm telling you, because BC could have ended the half with the last shot, I believe, Joe. They get a quick shot, come down the floor, and now Arditi follows the guy, which you don't want to do. And they, they go to the line now with a chance to bring it to four, when, in fact, BC had an opportunity to either tie it or go ahead. I thought they shot a little one prematurely one. myself. Screen will shoot a one and one. And the front end goes. One more free throw for Carlton Screen with two seconds left in the first half. Doug Abel comes in now for Boston College, replacing Moran. Well, here's the guy you like on oh, the yeah. line in a crucial segment of the game, but he is tough on the line. He's, he's a competitor. He battles every inch of the way. He had 23 straight, and then he missed one against uh, Seton Hall, and now he's made his last 38 in a row. Well, that's it. A four-point ball game at the end of the first half here at the Cotty Forum on the campus of Boston College in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. It is Providence College 34. Boston College 30 will be back after these local messages. In 1987, the Providence College Friars shocked the college basketball world with a joy ride that took them all the way to the Final Four. Supplying the fuel for that trip was a sharp shooting backcourt that featured Billy Donovan and Delray Brooks. The names have changed, but again in 1990, the Friars will go as far as their guards can take them. One of the backcourt backups on that Final Four squad is now PC's floor general, Carlton Paco Screen. The thing that uh, impresses me most of all about him is that he does do an outstanding job making the people around him better. I think he really understands what his teammates can and can't do, which I think is just a great trait that uh, a player can have. My role on this team is to provide leadership and basically uh, control the tempo of the game offensively as well as defensively and sort of get the ball to the right people. One of those people is running mate Eric Murdoch a preseason first-team All-Big East selection. Paco, he's our leader. He, uh, he gets everybody into the game. Uh, you know, he, he directs our squad. And uh, when we need a basket, he knows the right play to call. When we need the ball inside, he goes down and calls Marty number. And, um, you know, he's just so vital to our team. And uh, he starts it off on the defensive end, getting into the, the point guard's face and pressuring them and uh, it, it throws them out of sync so right there Paco he's the, he's the leader of our team. Obviously Murdoch is one of Screen's biggest fans and the feeling is mutual. You can't really define his game I think he's very intense I think he knows the game um, he just goes out and he's very competitive and he'll do anything to make sure the team wins. The way we like to do things uh, is with Carlton Screen handling the ball the majority of the time, and, uh, and he and Eric, I think, really do work extremely well to get together, and I think Eric would be the first one to tell you that a lot of his success depends on uh, uh, what Carlton does with him, and they do complement each other extremely well. While Screen and Murdoch are combining for 25 points and 10 assists a game in a balanced Friar attack, their reputation has been made on defense. By season's end, they should be 1-2 and two on the Providence all-time steals list. Our defense does start there in the backcourt, and, and Eric has um, is a player that really takes a lot of pride and joy in playing defense, and I think that's what makes him as effective as he is. The coaches, they want us to play defense no matter what. They want us giving the 110 percent on defense, and when I'm playing the ball, my man, when I play the ball, I'm not as effective, but uh, when I'm off the ball, I think I anticip anticipate well. I think I'm in the right spots at the right time, and um, it, you know, we press a lot, and I, that's where I get most of my steals. Uh, you know, Coach Barnes, he wants, he wants me taking chances in the press, and uh, I, I seem to get a lot of steals doing that. And we really feel that, uh, and we really try to do give them uh, uh, some freedom to go out on their own, especially uh, in the backcourt where we really feel we can put some pressure on people. But uh, it's really their skills that we try to incorporate into what we want to get done as a team. You have to have quick hands and instincts and things like that. I don't think you can practice that. I think when you come out, I don't think you look for a steal. Or, I think it just happens. 
They're like uh, Willie Sutton out there. I don't know if you remember Willie Sutton, one of the greatest bank robbers of all time. But people enjoyed when he stole it. He, was, he did it with class. If you can perform such an act, they, they really do it with class. They'll, they'll strip you nicely. We'll be back with more of our halftime after these messages from your local station. Back at the Conti Forum on the campus of Boston College, there's your score at the half. Providence leading the winless in the Big East Boston College Eagles by four points. Time now for the Big East halftime report. First thing we're going to take a look at is uh, how things are going in women's basketball in the Big East Conference. The Big East Women's Player of the Week is Connecticut's Megan Patterson. An all-rookie selection last year, Patterson averaged 15 points and seven rebounds in two games last week to help the Huskies to sole possession of first place. Holly Oslander of Syracuse is the Women's Rookie of the Week. In wins over Boston College and Pitt, Oslander averaged 10 points, seven rebounds, and three blocks. Now let's take a look at our Dodge Players of the Week in the Big East. We had co-players, Eric Murdoch, one of the young men we're looking at tonight for his great game against Syracuse. Uh, he's a good one, Gil. He does it all, and he does it very quietly. He's kind of a quiet destroyer. You forget him, and he burns you. And uh, one of the outstanding freshmen of the uh, year in the Big East Conference, a co-player of the week this week, a Dodge co-player in the Dove, Hennefeld of Connecticut. Well, you talk about Murdoch and Screen stealing the ball. This guy here has the greatest pair of hands around in the country, for that matter. He just knows what to do with the basketball. He finds the open guy. He delivers the big play. He does it all, and he's just a freshman. Outstanding player. Outstanding all around there. Let's uh, take a look at another play here by Nadav uh, Hennefeld, well, another he, one of the imports from Israel. You know what I think? He does it effortlessly. You know, he yeah. just, you kind of forget him, and then he puts you to sleep. Well, let's take a look at the Big East standings with St. John's playing Connecticut tonight. If Connecticut wins, we'll have a three-way tie for the lead in the Big East. This afternoon, Pitt from the Big East beating Arizona, and that one a shocker down at Georgetown at Landover, Maryland. Not the fact that Syracuse won, but the margin of victory. Other Big East action tonight so far at the half. St. John's leading UConn and Seton Hall up three on Villanova at Boy, the half. Two big contests. Of course, the first one being played at the Gamble Pavilion. That's a big one for Connecticut and PJ. All right, we'll be back with more halftime here after these local messages. Gil Santos and Don Perno back at the Conti Forum on the campus of Boston College at Chestnut Hill. There's our first half rebounding statistics. Providence uh, with a seven rebound edge, and that's an important stat because they have not shot that well, but they've gotten some pretty good second shot efforts. Second effort's big. This is the one that is the surprise, Dom. Exactly, 13 turnovers for Providence, and usually they average 16 a game. Boston College averaging 18 a game, almost 20 at times. Only five turnovers in the first half, and the steals. Providence with the two great guards who steal the ball all the time, but Boston College out stealing them tonight. It's crazy, you never know, but here's a great steal right here by Lior Arditi, and watch what he, you know, going out of bounds, he has enough presence, Gil, to whack it off Murdoch's leg, and BC gets the ball back. Another one of the plays in the first half that was a dandy was by Carlton Screen. He heard me here, because I said he wasn't doing much, but here he finds a seam, and he is devastating when he goes to the basket like that. Great body control, great finish. Outstanding Boston College player of the first half, the freshman center from Indiana, David Hinton, with 12 points, and here comes two of his 12. Well, BC has to stick it a little bit away from the hoop, and this big guy is doing it all. He's probably the only BC player that has stuck it something other than a layup in the first half, but he's going to be a good one. Taking a look at the scoring in the first half, you see Carlton Screen, the only Providence man in double figures. And for Boston College, uh, they're scoring in the first half. There's Rick Barnes of the Friars, was led by that freshman Hinton, who has 12 points in the first half. If well, Boston College, Dom, is to uh, make a run in the second half on Providence College, they're going to have to stick some of the open jump shots that the guards have had but not been able to exactly. hit. Exactly, and they've been good shots, Gil. They're not like four shots. They're there, they just got to stick it. Providence, on the other hand, has got to stop turning the ball over. That's right, and certainly that's one of the factors, along with the steals, that 
has kept BC in the game, even though their shooting has not been that good. Hinton, little baseline move. Got 14 Defense. points. His season high was 17 against Dartmouth. So the young man is close to his uh, Boston College career high. Oh, he's active. That was a fine move by the big guy, but he's doing it on both ends of the floor. He's rebounding and, of course, shooting well. And the turnaround jumper stuck at him by Sean Sedin. And once again, it's a four-point lead. And now Boston Providence goes aggressive on defense. And the foul is committed by Murdoch. Well, they went right at him that time. And Rick Barnes, that's his game plan. Aggressive attacking defense all the time. No doubt that time that Murdoch grabbed a piece of Bobby oh, yeah. Moran's head. First team foul on Providence uh, here in the second half. We have played less than a minute. 36-32. And it comes to Arditi. And we're going to get a foul. Burton was riding Arditi as he was trying to come up court. Be the second team foul on Providence. Well, you see right here, Jimmy O'Brien is off the bench on this particular play because you see Byrne riding Arditi all the way up the floor, and one official was on the play, and that was made by another official quite a ways down the floor. That does raise the ire of the coaches. And the third team foul on Providence College, and we have only played 55 seconds of the second half. That one's on Carlton's screen. Three team fouls in 55 seconds. You'll probably see Chris Watt up, up and at him shortly. Moran getting it in play to Doug Abel. As Boston College starts the second half with a three-guard offense, Edwards, Moran, and Arditi. The two big men are Abel and Hinton. Hinton's had a superior game. Now he's double, triple team. Nearly lost it, but got it back out. Well, they're paying a little more attention than when Hinton gets the ball. Now screen diving down in right at him. Moran and a whistle. We're going to get a foul on Boston College. This one is on Doug Abel. So the Eagles turn it over and the Flyers will put it in play with Marty Conlon to Carlton Screen. Providence led by four at the half and that's their lead right now. What I like about Providence College is they foul a good number of times but it doesn't rattle them. They don't get disturbed by it. They, they kind of, that's Part of their game yeah. plan. They know they're going to get into some foul trouble here and there because they're so active and aggressive. It just doesn't phase them. You don't see them getting riled. They just keep coming at you. Arditi just picked up his fourth personal. Murdoch for three. Drills it. <laughs> and three-point hoop for Eric Murdoch. All right, I tell you, you just can't forget him. You leave him that open, he's going to really burn you. Providence College now with a seven-point lead, their biggest lead in some time in this basketball game. 18 minutes to play. Moran has it stolen by Murdoch. Gliding, nice job of protecting the ball by Eric Murdoch. And suddenly the Flyers have a nine-point lead. And Jim O'Brien wants a timeout for his Boston College Eagles. As Providence College has started the second half with a rush and opened the lead to nine. We'll be back with more of this one in a little bit. Eric Murdoch. Colt player of the year this past uh, this past week, and you can watch him right here. He's got the quickest hands in the league. You put the ball in front of him, and then he finishes it off, and he had a three-point shot just prior to that. He's got five points, and the Flyers had the biggest lead they've had all night. A nine-point edge. There's your turnovers by the half as Providence has not turned it over all here in the second half, and the Eagles have kicked it away twice already. In the first half, they turned it over only five times total. BC's biggest lead in the first half was five. The Friars' biggest lead right now is nine. Hinton has it blocked, gets it back. And let's see, we have a foul on Providence College. That's going to be on Shamsuddin. And it'll be a possession foul. Or, or is it? <laughs> so it was little, the act of shooting? Yeah, I think he was, but it was a kind of a late whistle that time. It All looked right. as if he had the block. And then he... Saw something maybe he didn't see the first time around. We'll get two shots here for David Hinton. 15 points in the game now for Hinton. His career high at Boston College is 17. This is freshman season. Played at Castle High School in Newburgh, Indiana. And he gets the shooter's touch on that one. Nice stroke by the big guy. BC picks up the pressure a little bit right at Carlton's screen. Staying with their man-to-man -man D, and it's been effective uh, through most of the evening. Seven-point lead for Providence. Murdoch with Edwards on him. 
Now they swing it back to screen to reset the offense. Green and Murdoch, Burton, Shamsuddin, and Conlon. Ball loose. Arditi picked it up while on the floor and got it to Abel. That's an interesting rebound while you're sitting on the floor. Moran and now Arditi. Had a notion to shoot and changed his mind. I thought he was going to put it up. A three by Moran. No. Rebound Shamsuddin. Providence not allowing Boston College too many second shot opportunities through this game so far. Shamsuddin and Conlon have done an excellent job on the boards. Conlon wheeling. Nice dish off to Shamsuddin. Well done by Marty Conlon. Well, all four big people inside. BC, these guys move the ball well. They pass and catch the ball well. That was a nice dish by Conlon. Nine-point lead for Providence. And... Hinton continues to be the big guy for Boston College. Hinton's delivering. He's really playing well. He's active. He's playing confidently. Got 18 points, which is now a career high. And we're going to get a blocking foul on Hinton, which will put uh, Eric Murdoch at the free throw line. Team fouls here in the second half. Providence College has four. Hinton just picking up his third personal. Providence has four team fouls. They picked up three of them in the first minute of the second half. And Boston College has three team fouls. Murdoch to shoot two and a seven-point lead for the Friars over the... Michael Reese will come in now. Replacing Arditi. Excuse me, Gil. Jim O'Brien change. Going from the three guard now to just the two. Bringing in Reese. Reese played well in the first half. He had a good outing against Seton Hall. Just a freshman, but coming along. And future looks good. You got Curly in the wings. You got Reese coming along. BC's going to be in the battle. Of course, it takes a while. Well, they've got good, big, young people. That's what they've got. They're, they're really good players of the young, of the uh, big ones. They're good young players. Exactly. A freshman, him, Reese, a freshman. Well, him looks as good a big guy as there is in the, in the conference as far as rookie goes and big people. Moran with it, an eight-point lead for Providence. Reese, now Hinton, trying to wheel. He does. No. All the Friars there for the rebound as Shamsuddin gets it to screen. Screen going coast to coast, travel with it. BC doing a nice job that time of collapsing down on Carlton's screen. He had an opening, but they closed off the rest of the lane quickly, causing him to travel. Fifteen and a half minutes left in the ball game. Providence College leading by eight. They're four and three in the conference. The Eagles are 0 and seven. And the ball is out of bounds off Providence, off that man, Eric Murdoch. Murdoch and Screen are at the basketball constantly. Out front, when it goes down low now to Hinton, they know he's having a big night. As soon as it goes into him, they're down at the ball. So Hinton can't bring the ball down low because if he does, it's gone. Moran with screen on him and now Doug Abel. A three-point shot by Edwards. Does not go. And another rebound for Shamsuddin. He's done an excellent job off the boards tonight for Providence. Murdoch. Looked like he drew a foul. Conlon offensive board. He did draw a foul. Marty Conlon will go to the line to shoot a couple. Have to put bodies on the big people down low. Conlon and Shamsuddin getting the second shots. Murdoch probably pumps fakes and draws the defensive player off his feet as well as anyone in the league. Then he delivers it. Usually these go, but this time Conlon, good inside effort, goes up and is fouled by Doug Abel. Now Marty Conlon will shoot two. If he gets them both, it'll give the Friars a 10-point lead. Right now the nine-point lead equals their biggest of the night. His numbers in the evening so far, he's averaging... Uh, 15 points and 7 rebounds. One more shot for Marty Conlon. He drills them both, and now it is a 10-point lead for Providence, their biggest of the game. A steal, and Burton just stepped out of bounds with it. Outstanding athletic move as he nearly saved it. Take another look at this. Providence defensive effort again. Here's Burton coming across the lane. There's a double up on the other side. Does step out of bounds, but now you can just feel the Providence pressure creeping up, creeping up on you. Very important for BC this time down the floor to come down with a good, a good shot. Moran. 
Stu Edwards. Hitton is out of the ball game right now. That man has replaced him, and Conlon comes up with a steal. It is a four on two. Reverse layup doesn't go, but screen was fouled. Gil, what happens is the game wears on. The Providence pressure takes its toll. That time, not a direct steal, but they're making you think about it now. So you turn your head, you lose concentration. Screen comes up with it and finds his partner. Murdoch goes by the hoop, and it's fouled again. Well, Eric Murdoch will shoot a couple. He's a 74% foul shooter. He's averaging 15 points a ball game for the Friars. Came in with a team-high 55 steals. Right now, the relentless Providence pressure is beginning to rattle Boston College here early in the second half. 14.27 to go. Friars now with a 12-point lead. And they're going to keep it up. They are... Heavy pressure in the backcourt. Exactly. Now you see the trap. First half, they didn't trap. They went more man Another, man. Another one. Green backing things up now to set up the offense for Providence College. They're on a roll right now. They're leading by 12. Burton low to brag and a whistle and a foul on Boston College. So valuable to have a point guard like Carlton Screen. He controls your team. They had a shot maybe down low, but they brought it out to the big guy. And, of course, the pressure, relentless pressure of Providence College takes its toll. Maybe not so early, but as the game goes on, they're at it all the time. Great hands right here, and the turnovers are mounting. We're going to get a timeout right now with 14.04 to play in the basketball game. The Providence College Friars have upped their lead to 12 points at 48.36 back after these local messages. Sponsorship of Big East basketball. There's a second half shooting, uh, Don Perno, and the Friars obviously smoking. Well, they are. Their defense is picking up the tempo, and of course, they've had a number of layups. They have forced Boston College to turn it over five times in the second half, equaling what they turned over in the entire first half. And there's still 13, 54 to go, so the intensity of the defensive pressure has been picked up a notch. Comes low to Doug Adel. Now Moran and Edwards. Eagles trailing by 12. Strong move by Adel, and he gets fouled. He's a tough kid. He's not that big to be playing among the trees. He's 6'5" solid 200 pounds foul on Marquis Bragg and Doug Abel will be at the line to shoot a couple for Boston College for the Friars their 15 foul of the second half Boston College has six well where this guy gets you he's so explosive with that first step Gill, and that's where he gets by you but Collins making it tough for him inside and yet he still got through one more free throw for Doug Abel Rebound by Providence's Eric Murdoch, and he was drilled to the floor by Moran. That puts Boston College over the limit. Providence will be shooting fouls the rest of the way with 13.38 to go. And that certainly could make a big difference as well in the second half of this one. Fourth one on Moran. Providence committed three fouls in the first minute. Remember that? Exactly. And they committed uh, two since then. While well, Boston College has suddenly started a foul, and a lot of things are coming unraveled for the Eagles right now. It, it certainly is. What's happening right here is that the defensive pressure is causing BC to react a little quickly on offense. And the uh, Providence, on the other hand, hasn't gotten any more foul trouble. They started off that bang, 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 and now it's just quieted down. It's gone the other way. Arditi is back in for Boston College. So let's see how they've got out there. Good. Edwards, Arditi. Reese Beasley and Abel. Providence has Screen, Murdoch, Burton, Conlon, and Brad. The free throws by Murdoch, and it's a 13-point lead for Providence, their biggest of the game. Providence now just straight man to man. Gilaldo, here's Quinn running at the ball. Always have to be careful with Providence. They have so many different attacks on defense. You can't fall asleep. Reese from outside, no. Right to Carlton Screen. Head up all the way and looking the floor as he comes up. I tell you, he's really an outstanding player. That was interesting that time. He, Murdoch was down the floor, but he wise enough 
Brings it outside. Bragg on the bank shot. Nice move by the sophomore from South Orange, New Jersey, Marquise Bragg. And suddenly the Friars are up 15. And Boston College is rattled right now. Reese getting it to Edwards. Reese Cardi slapped away by Murdoch. It goes out of bounds. Boy, they keep coming at you. Boy, they're active. Active, great hands. All oh, hands are always in good position to make a steal. They and they anticipate the steal very well. And of course, comes with repetition, practice, and big game down in Connecticut, Gil. 41-41. Seton Hall by 10 over Villanova in the second half. Wow, that's interesting. Villanova had run off some pretty good games, beating this Providence team at Providence by a big margin. And outstanding defensive play by Bragg, but he's going to be called for a foul. Reese coming across the lane, was open, got the ball. Here he is right here. Nice cut by Michael Reese, the young freshman. Goes to it, but Marquise Bragg pitches it away and fouls the young fellow. Now, Reese had gone with the left hand. He'd have dropped it in and got himself a three-point yeah, play. Exactly. Came back with the right hand. That's closest to the yeah. defensive player. Sham Sadin back in for Providence. Reese missing the front end of the two-shot foul. He's uh, one of those young, big people we were talking about for Boston College. Only a freshman. However, he misses both free throws and then gets the rebound. They'll probably drill that. Oh. Nice follow by Doug Abel. Dougie Abel, one of the quickest leapers in this league, slams a throw. That is the first basket for Providence for Boston College in over two minutes. A reach-in foul on Boston College. Reese reaching in on Quinton Burton. The lead right now is 13 for Providence. Let's take a look at this follow-up by Doug Abel. Now we talked about Doug. Here's Michael Reese with the short jump shot. Looked as if it was going to go, but. The young man from Baltimore, Maryland, drills it through with great timing and leaping ability. One and Burton one. shooting one and one. Good solid player, this guy. Averages 10 points a game, five rebounds. He Not is. flashy, but he had a big block a little while ago. He does a lot of things well. They really do. I actually, their team, they're not a flashy type team. They just keep working at it. And they're relentless. Yeah, they yeah. never let up. They never let up. And it just intensifies once they get you. They don't let you up. Hinton with a rebound for Boston College. 12 minutes to go in the game. Providence is up 14 points. Abel. Hinton with 18 tonight. His previous high in the Big East was eight against Georgetown. So there's your kind of game that young man has had. Oh, outstanding game. He's done very well, but they've kind of shut him down a little bit. They're concentrating more on him. The guards are ducking in when he gets the ball, and yeah. consequently have to put it outside. They dump it in low, and a nice turn and move by Michael Reese. Now, Screen and Murdoch between them have 27 points in the backcourt. Boston College, their three-man backcourt with only nine points. Moran is yet to score. Exactly. Big discrepancy, and of course, Hinton is the big guy inside for Boston College tonight. Conlon, nice little move. Doesn't look that smooth in getting it, but he gets the he job gets done. They get a foul on screen, fouling Brian Edwards. And that puts Providence over the limit, and so Edwards will be to the line to shoot a one-and-one. One. With 11.07 to go in the game, Boston College trailing Providence by 14 points. It was a four-point game at the half, 34-30, to 30, Providence leading. But here in the second half, the Friars have taken control over Jim O'Brien's team. Edwards will shoot one more. He is a sophomore from Dorchester, Massachusetts. He scored a lot of points in high school. Sure we did. talked about over 2,500, breaking Ronnie Perry's scoring record. Of course, now he's looked upon more as a guard to control the ball. He doesn't look for his offense as much as he had maybe last year when Barrows was playing. Johnson Dean getting it to Burton and now screen. 10.50 to go in the ball game. A 12-point lead for the Friars. Murdoch off the pick. Couldn't come up with a handle on it. Loose ball. Screen has it. Slapped away by Edwards. Right into the hands of Shamsuddin. Hit it with a stick. The thing is alive. <laughs> Look at this. 
Look at that. Well done. However, Burton couldn't get it to go through. The dish off to Reese. Little fake move. No. Arditi to rebound. Play getting a little ragged right now. Providence got the numbers. Losing control as he was going in for the layup was Murdoch. It'll be Boston College ball, uh, Providence College ball, as it went off Arditi. It looked like it was a field goal attempt coming down that lane, but <laughs> BC can't catch one underneath the hoop, and BC, when it has numbers, breaks up the floor. Rick Barnes has to feel a little bit better about his team right now. Probably was that half-time half conversation, go. Arditi and Abel go out. Will Foley and Walter Lundy are in for Boston College. For Providence College, Chris Watts is in, replacing Eric Murdoch. The shooting percentages in the ball game now. Providence is up to 53. Boston College down to 41. Foley to the deck to come up with a loose ball. 12-point ball game, 10 minutes to play. Providence, 55. Boston College, 43. And we're going to get traveling on Michael Reese. Michael don't believe it, but he just gave that quick pump and moved those feet. That is the 11th turnover for Boston College. The sixth of the second half. There's your shooting in the second half. Providence shooting it well. Boston College, as a result of heavy pressure defense, not shooting it well. Conlon, whoa, swallowed up by Foley and a great play by Edwards to keep it in play. Well, Will Foley just came in the game, made his presence felt. Edwards is a good save. Edwards pull up, no. Rebound, Shamsuddin. Shamsuddin, excuse me, Shamsuddin playing a nice solid game tonight. Reese comes up for the deep rebound as play is ragged really at both ends right now, Don Perno. Well, Edwards is walking it up now, getting into a good offensive set. A lot of time to go in this ball game. BC down 12, but how about that move? It didn't go for him. But I tell you, that was a major league move by David Hinton. Fine play, and of course, Providence comes up with the ball on screen, selling his team down. Three. Watts missing it. Sean Sedin with a rebound. We're going to get a foul on Boston College on Brian Edwards committing the foul. Sean Sedin has had a bundle of rebounds in this ball game. He sure has. He's hitting both both ends very well he's active he's aggressive and Rick Barnes said that they need the big guy to do that night after night after night when he's playing well this Providence team is very solid well he had seven at the half so he's got to be in the double figures now now Hinton Edwards and Reese all go out for Boston College so we're gonna have to uh, take a look at who they've got out there Johnson Dean missing the front end of the one and one rebound was taken down by Corey Jackson you got Moran and Lundy at the guards. Abel, Jackson, and Foley in the front court for Boston College. Jim O'Brien getting some new players in there. Here's Lundy. Tip around. No. Ball is out of bounds. Off Providence College. Off Chris Watts. And Foley and Burton go after each other. Shamsa Dean is holding on to Foley. And we've got a real flaring of tempers on both sides. I did not see why that happened. And I think Jim O'Brien, he's riled because something must have occurred prior to Foley reacting. And I didn't see it either, Gil, but I'm sure that's what he's discussing right now. Well, that was, that whatever happened, happened away from the ball. Now, we don't have a replay of that because we're, our cameras, of course, were following the ball. But then the next thing I saw was Burton flying across the floor <laughs> and Foley pushing him. And we've got a technical foul. On uh, Will Foley. I, I saw Jim O'Brien give that L sign. He may have seen maybe Quinn Burton gave Foley a quick elbow. And, of course, the second guy, the second incident, oh, yeah. is the one that's caught. Yeah, the, uh, the instigator generally is never caught. The retaliator <laughs> is always caught. Isn't that the truth? Foley is a 6'9 junior from Albany, New York. And he is the young man hit with the technical foul. Uh, not a technical foul, okay? It's an intentional foul on Foley. And what the officials have done is send the players to both benches to kind of cool tempers a little bit. Good yeah, move. Good move. Wisely, they were getting a little heated. 
I think one of the reasons play was getting a little heated, uh, Dom, is, is that play was getting ragged. It was scattery. It, it certainly was. Both teams just going up and down the floor. No one could get a handle on the rock. You know, they, it's just, it got that way by the, the action. And, of course, one thing leads to the next, a word, an elbow, or what have you. But this is probably good. They settled both teams down. That's a dead ball foul. And so that will mean it'll be Burton, the dead ball technical foul on Foley. And uh, Quinton Burton will be the man at the line. High scores in the game so far. Hinton with 18 for Boston College. Murdoch with 12. Screen with 11 for Providence College. And Carlton Screen will shoot the technicals. Okay, I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why Carlton Screen, screen is a 90% foul shooter. Wow, he doesn't miss. What's he got, 39 in a row? Yep. Best in the Big East. Quentin Burr went on the line and Rick Barnes said, what are you doing there? <laughs> Get out of there. <laughs> One oh, more man. for the senior guard from Brooklyn. And now it's a 14-point lead for Providence College with 8.29 to go in the game. And it'll be Providence ball on the technical foul. Bent will put it in play and does the screen. It is Screen, Murdoch, Shamsad Dean out there for Providence, along with Quinton Burton and Greg Bent. Providence now operating out of their double stack set, controls the ball, and then they'll get into their offensive situation that they're looking to. But this can control, take some time away, and then if you fall asleep on them, they attack you. Murdoch with Moran on him. They are at 12 seconds on the shot clock right now. Friars by 14. Screen in the paint. Drills it. Tough, tough play. A man came to pick him up, and he stopped on a dime, leaped into the air, and drilled the big one. Friars up by 16, their biggest lead of the game, with seven and a half minutes to go. Foley. Now Moran in low to Abel. And he gets fouled, and Doug Abel will be to the line to shoot for Boston College. Well, when Abel gets the ball down low in that position, something good usually happens. He either makes a hoop or nine out of ten times he gets fouled. He's got excellent maneuverability to down low, and of course he's a little smaller and a little quicker than the guy that's usually guarding him. Two shots for Doug Abel. The first one goes. Actually, when you look at the Boston College roster of their top 10 players, none of them are seniors. Exactly, of course. Well, we're going to take a timeout here with seven and a half minutes to go in the basketball game. The Providence College Friars are up 14 back after these local messages. Back at the County Forum on the campus of Boston College, you look at Rick Barnes, the head coach of the Friars. And there's a look at the Massachusetts High School Player of the Year last year, Mike Heron. Suffered a broken ankle, and he's out for the rest of the season. He's going to be a good player for him. He is, and I saw that game, and oh, was he in pain. I felt for him. Screen for Providence. Friars are up by 14. Their biggest lead was 16. The biggest Boston College lead came in the first half, and that was five. And you see the percentages, Gil, right there. BC shooting 25% the second half, and it's obviously the discrepancy of why the score is the way it is right now. Foley has just been called for a foul. And that will put uh, Providence College shooter at the free throw line. There's Foley trying to plead his case. <laughs> and Jimmy Bird just nodding, of course, and shouts Dean going to the line. Uh, Providence College has taken very good care of the basketball in the second half. They've committed only four second-half turnovers. This kid's had a heck of a game, John Dean. He certainly has. He hasn't had a lot of points, but he's got a lot of rebounds. A lot of rebounds on both ends. 12 rebounds, 10 points. That's a fine game for him. Rebound by Abel. A three. Doesn't go for Moran. The rebound to Conlon. Quickly to Murdoch, four flyers up court. Loop pass is stolen. BC with the numbers here. Drills it. That's Corey Jackson. Sophomore from Miami, Florida. And it's down to a 13-point lead. 
Now they double team the ball. Screen is in trouble. Finally gets it off to Murdoch. Screen, of course, has been involved in those traps so often he knows how to get out of them. Murdoch takes it to the paint. Now Conlon. Whistle and a blocking foul is called on Doug Abel. What's interesting in Providence's team, when they get the basketball, and you see Doug Abel, his fourth foul, playing the fine game as he has in every Big East contest. His screen. Check this double team. It's a good trap right here, but he's been involved in that situation so many times, he finds Murdoch to his right, who's come to the rescue. Marty Conlon with a one and one for Providence. Misses the first one, does not get another, but Quentin Burton had the rebound. He got tripped, and nobody saw it. It's going to be Boston College ball coming down as Burton was going for the ball. He got tripped and hit the deck hard. Good action by the Friars. They dive on the floor. They go at it. Here's another little variation of their press. Not with the heated tempo that they had earlier. Hinton, as he turned to shoot, to squeeze the ball out of his own hand. That's kind of what the pressure makes you do. You react a little bit quicker than Hinton did earlier in the evening. Up court it comes to Eric Murdoch. Screen again. Six minutes to go in the ball game. Providence by 13. They led by four at the half. But they have cut down on their turnovers in the second half, and they have forced Boston College into numerous second-half turnovers. And right now, they just want to milk it down. Of course, they know if they get fouled, they go to the line here, shoot one and ones So it's Rick Barnes is using the clock. And that'll put Quentin Burton at the free-throw line. For Providence College, there you look at the freshman David Hinton, who's had such a fine game for Boston College. Brian Edwards checking back in for the Eagles, and he replaces Bobby Moran. Providence has a screen, Murdoch, Burton, Shamsuddin, and Conlon out there. Rick hasn't subbed as frequently this no. half, Gil, as he did earlier. Watts has only played a couple of minutes here and there. He's kind of going with his iron bit. five a little bit more. I think he probably wanted to get some stability into his team's performance because they were... Uh, they did not play well in the first half and turned it over an awful lot. And this is his team with probably the best chemistry also. You know, the starters, they've done it. Connecticut up by nine over St. John's. That's there, that UConn club is good. That's a double dribble by Brian Edwards. Connecticut up by eight points on St. John's. And Villanova back to Tyson Hall. And Connecticut has been doing it without Scott Burrell, and they just got Burrell back the other day. Exactly. He's a fine player. He's a great athlete. You talk of it, Doug Abel. Well, Scott Burrell for Connecticut is that athletic type. Of course, he throws the baseball pretty well, too. That's what I heard. <laughs> like 90 miles an hour. That's not bad. Abel. Wow. Over <laughs> Sean Dean. Great nice. play by Doug. Giving up six inches there to uh, Shamsuddin, who's 6'11", and able at 6'5". Reach-in foul there by Corey Jackson. The lead is 12 for Providence with five minutes to go. And at the free throw line will be uh, Quentin Burton for the Friars of Providence College. Take a look at this stuff by Abel going over the bigger man, Shamsuddin. Uh, here's the pass down low. Now, Shamsuddin is 6'11". But Doug Abel goes over him with authority. Burton canning the front end of the one and one. Murdoch and Screen with 14 apiece, the top scorers for Providence College. Shamsuddin has 10 points and a dozen rebounds. And Burns probably creeping up on that double figure mark also. They all contribute. Well, that's it. You very seldom see one of the Providence players up in the 25 to 30 point range. You see most of them in the uh, 14 to 18 point range. A three for Brian Edwards. And suddenly it brings it back down to 11. Yeah, the three point shot will get you back into the game quickly. That's their first one of the game. The first one they've made, I believe. 
Interesting, and uh, that's an area we talked about. The perimeter people have to stick some of those. Now Providence content to milk some of the time off the clock here. We're down to four and a half minutes to go in the ball game. And these two guys are excellent with the basketball. Screen and Murdoch, they really control the game. They both can handle and pass very well, and they keep their heads up all the time. Burton kicking it low to Conlon, and a foul from the backside by Abel, who careened into Marty Conlon. And the 6'10 senior will go to the line to shoot. And that's his fifth foul. That was the fans did not like that call, but Doug, active, aggressive, looked as if it was a foul from this vantage point. Jimmy O'Brien, the head coach at Boston College, wondering when his first league or conference victory will come this season. He's 0-7 in the conference. That uh, last three-pointer by Edwards was the first one after eight misses for Boston College. Providence is 3 for 10 in the three-point area. That pushes the lead back up to 12. Conlon with one more. Sixty five fifty two Providence Leo Arditi to put it in play for the Boston College Eagles does to Edwards Providence just keeps the pressure on you. That's their game plan. They don't back off very often. They just the intensity varies somewhat a three and right there is Sham Sedin for another rebound. The big guy really hitting the boards well He's tonight played an outstanding game. I like you look at all the people on the floor there for Providence. There isn't anyone that hasn't been very consistent tonight. In particular, the second half, they've come out and played a fine halftime game, half, half a ball game. Well, we've got 3:50 to go in the ball game. The Providence College lead is 13 points right now. There's your score. The Providence College Friars led by four at the half. But their relentless defensive pressure, forcing numerous Boston College turnovers and the Eagles falling behind here in the second half. Providence really taking control of this game. John Sedin in this ball game has 13 rebounds, and he's up in double figures and points. Is he not also? He, he is. He's yes, he is. Definitely. Yes. There's the BC Brutal double team. Yeah. And Burton calls a timeout. Smart move. Quinton Burton was just absolutely totally trapped over in the corner at midcourt and he was presence of mind enough to call a timeout. So we'll take the timeout from the Cotty Forum at Boston College. <laughs> Providence College Friars up 65 to 52 with 345 to play in this ball game. A lot of people have been uh, responsible for what the Friars have accomplished in this evening as they attempt to go five and three in the conference in this ball game. Well, they've all been very solid, and we're going to get a foul here on Walter Lundy fouling Carlton Screen. St. John's has moved ahead of Connecticut by seven with two minutes. To, okay, that I was going to say that a little while ago they were uh, they were ahead by nine. <laughs> this here is the correct score. Connecticut by seven with two ten to go. Well, that would be a big one, and that pavilion will be rocking. That would create a three-way tie for first place in the Big East between St. John's, Connecticut, and Georgetown. Might give Connecticut the nod because they've beaten both those squads. They've played a lot of home games, though, Don. They must have the entire month of February <laughs> playing on the road, really. <laughs> right, yeah, they have been home quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, they have, of course, they have Syracuse and Georgetown, I know, away, those two. Sean Sedin with a rebound, couldn't get it to drop. But that was his 14th rebound of the game for that young man and the Friars have had only 26 as a team. Well, he's got more than half of it. He's he's really been sharp tonight. He's hitting both ends active on the D and he's kind of closed down hitting this half also uh, Gil. Quentin Burton comes up with a loose ball. 14 point lead for the Friars. Providence shooting at 66 percent in this second half. Boston College at 45 percent. But Providence plays such good defense and they're such a hustling scrapping team that when they are shooting that well at 65 they are capable of beating just about anybody they play. They, they are and where they do a great job they don't play any zone but their man to man defense they collapse it in the lane so well and dive down in that it's very similar to a zone. 
screen. Nice move. Right between two defenders, Carlton Screen laying it in for a 16-point lead, and that equals the biggest lead of the night for the Providence College Friars. Hinton for three. A little deep for the big guy that time. Of course, they're down 16. They're trying to hit the three-pointer, but right now, Carlton Screen is controlling this game. They're using some time. They set up their stall set. They'll run the clock down or pick up a foul. Right there, Arditi fouling Quentin Burton. The Friars have four players in double figures. And uh, right now, we're going to give you our player of the game with 2.20 to go and Providence up by 16. And it's that young man who just, by the way, we're going to add a rebound to that total, just picked up another one. Ten points, 15 rebounds for the senior from Staten Island, New York. Abdul Shamsuddin, our player of the game tonight. Yeah. Well, he certainly deserves it. There's a lot of heroes in tonight's game for them, but the Providence strength has been everyone contributing. Everyone gets a piece of the pie. And Shamsuddin, however, when you rebound that well, you have to be recognized. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because rebounding is hard work. Exactly. It's, You're you know, battling. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the blue-collar work. The, it's the shooting good. and the, the points and all, that's the frosting. That's the ice cream. No doubt about it. Whoa, that's a Major League three for Leo Arditi. Arditi with an NBA three-pointer. But Shamsuddin Dean certainly deserving of our player of the game award tonight for his work off the boards. 15 rebounds. Some work here in a college game. Oh, great, great evening. And of course now, BC looking to pick up the defense. Oh, what a play there by Murdoch. Was that a defensive play or what? Unbelievable Beautiful. hand. Beautiful. Great timing. BC has the steal right here. And it looks as if Edwards is going to go in unmolested. But watch the timing by Eric Murdoch. Perfect. Put the ball out of bounds. Arditi takes it strong to the basket. Won't go for him. Abel. The rebound puts it back in. Timeout Boston College with a minute and 37 seconds to go. And the Providence lead is down to 13. Boston College had only two players in double figures tonight. Uh, David Hinton with 18. He had 12 of those in the first half. And Doug Abel. Uh, we just saw a score with 12 in the ball game. Well, the freshman, of course, uh, did a great job for Boston College in the first half. He was sticking the jump shot, making some nice, strong back-to-the-basket moves. Abel come on the second half and uh, has done a good job. But once again, the strength of the BC team, four people in double figures, has taken its toll, as has the pressure defense go. Yeah, Providence, uh, that's the one thing. Even if you're turning the ball over... As, as Providence did in the first half and not shooting as well as you normally do as Providence played that way in the first half. When you are a good defensive team that is always scrambling and hustling on defense, you're always going to stay in the ball game. Exactly. Generally. Exactly. And of course, PC, they hit you in spurts. They may go to sleep for a while, but then boom, 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 they rattle off six, eight points and they catch you sleeping. You can't fall asleep versus that team. Providence College up by 13. There are our top scorers. Hinton for the Eagles. BC showing their own pressure. D right here. Nice action by the Eagles. Tied up ball. Possession arrow pointing toward Providence. Burton and Bobby Moran hit the deck. Take another peek at this one. Uh, BC has been scrambling on the D. And, of course, you know what's interesting? Burton, he'll hit the deck at any time. He's been on the floor a good part of the evening. Yeah. Gonna get a foul. That was away from the ball. I didn't see that one. Arditi commits the foul, and he has fouled out. One of the few in the Big East this year with a six foul rule to foul out of the ball game. Exactly, and uh, young man from Israel, he's a good one. He can stick it. Did some nice things this evening. Of course, he's got a fellow Israeli in uh, the Dove Hennefell, who was quite a player go. He certainly is. John Sedin missing the front end of the one-and-one. 13-point one. Providence lead. Edwards for Boston College. A minute and 16 to go. They get it into Moran. Cuts it down to 11. Biggest Providence lead of the night was 18 points. Nice dish off. Reverse layup. No. Burton traveled with it. Carlton screen, you see Rick Barnes hang on to it, work it, but that time great effort by screen to find the open guy. 
Moran faked a three. Now Edwards for three. He gets it. I'll tell you what. He's got an eight-point ball game right now with 52 seconds to go. Battling back. You see Jim O'Brien on the sideline there. Quick timeout. Providence Nine. College is suddenly uh, up by only eight. We'll be back. Here's a ball getting over to Brian Edwards for a three-pointer that suddenly makes this an eight-point game with 52 seconds left. Well, he stuck a couple of tonight. This is the second one he has had. He's got the capabilities to do it. Moran immediately fouling Eric Murdoch. That'll put Murdoch on the line for a one-and-one one for Providence College. This is the strategy left here for the Eagles. Looks like... Connecticut is going to create a three-way tie for first place in the Big East Conference. St. John's, UConn, and Georgetown all at number one at, after seven games of the season. Well, a great conference, certainly, and there'll be some heavy action in the second half. <laughs> and, and Connecticut had lost its first two. Exactly. They've done this and, with five straight wins. And uh, the last time they were beaten, St. John's ripped them, I think, by 31 oh, points. Yeah. Did a tune on them down in New York. But a great win uh, at to open your pavilion. That's a great evening. It's a 10-point lead now for Providence as Murdoch buries the two free throws, and there's your time remaining. Got a whistle and traveling call on Boston College, and the turnovers that eluded them in the first half came on to kill them in the second half as the relentless defensive pressure by Providence College just to continue to force Boston College turnovers in the second half, and that's really what made the difference, Don. It, it certainly did, and of course, once the ball gets into the hands of Carlton Screen, you see Jimmy O'Brien here. His team's a battle every night, certainly. Tonight, I think one of the problems is the guard play didn't stick that jump shot until late in the game. Edwards had a couple late, but by and large, they had a problem, of course, you mentioned turning the ball over was a major factor in, uh, in tonight's ball game. At the free throw line, Carlton Screen. Bobby Moran has fouled out for the Eagles of Boston College. Moran, uh, just a junior from Queens, New York. Screen has just had an outstanding game again. Actually, there were a number of uh, Providence players that you could have, uh, we could have named as the player of the game. Screen being one of them. Exactly. You probably could have given it to the entire that first five that's out there because yep. they all certainly contribute to this victory, but. You like to see the big guy get recognized because, like you say, uh, we're tough in the trenches. Edwards misses a three. Ball loose. Edwards has it again. This is uh, Reese kicking it out to Abel. Jackson, no. Rebound off the hand of Conlon. Now he has it. Conlon gaining control to Murdoch. As the time will tick away, and the Providence College Friars will improve to 5-3 and three in the Big East. Boston College will drop to 0-8. Screen with 18, Murdoch with 17 leading the Friars. Hinton with 18 and Abel with 14 for Boston College. And this one is over along with Dom Perno. This is Gil Santos, our final score from the County Forum. Providence 74, Boston College 62. The preceding has been a Big East Conference Television Network production. Providence College Basketball is sponsored by the Rhode Island